Dogmas are a help because they help us to get out of a certain level. In fact, relativity is the essence of morality. There is the uh, uh, teaching of Adam Smith, who horrified everybody because he said that naturally people are out for themselves. A person becomes a baker or a boot black or whatever because he wants money for himself. He's not doing it to help other people. And uh, I have analyzed this thing in my uh, book, um, uh, Hope for a Better World. And I pointed out that this is certainly true. There's no point in getting outraged. People are basically selfish. But there is such a thing as expansive selfishness and contractive selfishness. For example, let us say, and this is an example that I've given in my book, Joe Baker may be... Uh, uh, there may be two bakers in a town. One would be Joe Baker, who is only thinking of himself. And anybody who comes into his store, he's only thinking of him in terms of the money he'll get out of him. And so he doesn't think in terms of what kind of uh, bread the other person, the customer, would like. He just thinks of, uh, like a woman in Taormina in Sicily said to me, and this was a very interesting story, because I went to her shop wanting a hat. It was very hot outside. And uh, I said, well, which I usually I don't wear hats. And so I said, what hat do people usually like? And uh, she said, I don't care. I just take their money and let them go. That's all I'm interested in is their money. <laughs> and I said to her, well, what a waste of your day. I said, you've got the opportunity to make friends with people. And said, all you think of them is what their money they're going to pay on the counter. What do you do, go home and have nightmares? This is not, this is, you're wasting a whole day like that. And I was very frank with her. And I thought, well, I've lost that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, <clears throat> I came back there the next day, next year. And I was going to pass her shop because I didn't have any interest in it. And she happened to be outside and she came over with tears. And she kissed my cheeks as they do in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> And she was so friendly to me. And I happened to, because I had come back to the hotel, they gave me a, glass, a bottle of wine. Well, I don't drink wine, so I thought to give it to her. And uh, I gave it to her. She was weeping. But my statement to her completely changed her life. She was thinking in terms of other people. Well, this is enlightened selfishness when you think of making other people happy instead of just what you can get out of them. And so we have William Crumpet. And uh, I may have the names wrong from my book, doesn't matter. Anyway, William Crumpet has the same job, the same business, makes the same things. But when his customers come in, he greets them like friends. And he asks them if there's anything that they would like that he could make for them that he hasn't made. And he asks after their families and so on. Nah, who's going to go to his shop as opposed to Joe Baker? Obviously, they'll go to his shop because he's treating them like human beings. And so Joe Smith is perfectly right, but he doesn't bring in the human element. The human element is that the more you think of other people, the more they will think of you. The more you give to other people, the kinder they will be to you. People who say, I'm not, I feel unloved, don't worry about that. Just love people. They will love you if you love them. It's a simple formula, and it never fails. If you are kind, people will be kind. But you have to expand your consciousness. And so we find that the teaching of uh, absolutism, which became materialism, which became complete selfishness, these things finally ended up in 1920, at uh, the time that Master came to this, to this country, as a desperate need. Because, first of all, there was the materialism. Science has created a materialistic attitude toward life. Many scientists think that we aren't conscious. What kind of consciousness they use to make such a statement, I don't know. <laughs> it seems kind of rid uh, a ridiculous uh, contradiction in terms, but there they are saying it. In fact, the, uh, I've reached the point where I don't have too much faith in science. It's changing its mind every 10 years or so. 
basic teachings, even of, of a Darwin, which is one of the basic dogmas of modern science, now they're questioning it. Well, I questioned it in my book on uh, uh, Out of the Labyrinth. I said that it may be true, everything that he's saying, but it tells you the how of it. It doesn't tell you the why of it. And I remember I went to a, a uh, Jewish scholar, Leon Kolb, his name was. He was retired from Stanford University. But I had heard that he had also studied uh, anthropology, and I wanted, thinking he was religious, that I wanted him to endorse what I had written on uh, Darwin and evolution. And he, in fact, was absolutely in the camp of Darwin. And he denounced vigorously everything that I was trying to say to him. He said, it's completely accidental, and he was shouting. And I said, well, look, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I would like you to read what I said. All right, I'll read it, but it's completely accidental. And uh, so anyway, I let him read it. And a couple of weeks later, I phoned him, and he said, come over, come over, I want to see you. So I came over, and he greeted me at the door. He said, this is wonderful. He was from Romania, so he had a strange accent. And I'm from Romania, but I don't. (laughs) And <laughs> anyway, he said, this is wonderful. You have not contradicted anything Darwin says, but you have given it meaning. We must spread this message everywhere. And it's true. The same truths that science avers as truth are not necessarily the last word. You have to see things from different angles. And what I've done in that book, and I still think of it as one of my most important books, even though most devotees haven't read it, but I am very much in favor of it because it shows it shows how using the same logic as all these atheists and nihilists and uh, scientific materialists and so on, using their logic, not my logic, I have shown that there is another way of looking at everything which gives everything meaning. <laughs>